Who was Carl growing up, family, parents, upbringing, you know, school? How was he in school? What stories do we need to know about him on, that influenced him to become who he ended up becoming with writing the book with Engels, Communist Manifesto? Yeah, he was he was born in Trier, Germany, May 5th, 1818. So Trier is spelled like Trier, T-R-I-E-R. And it was, it was one of the most religious cities in all of Germany, um, very heavily Roman Catholic. In fact, the ancient cathedral in Trier was built in the 320s, the 320s, not the 1320s, the 320s, around the year 330. And it was built, financed by Helena, St. Helena, the mother of Constantine, of all things, who made a pilgrimage to the Holy Land and came back with um, all sorts of artifacts. Uh, she believes that she found the actual cross that Christ was crucified on, the actual crown of thorns, which to this day um, allegedly, allegedly is the cross of thorns that's in Notre Dame in Paris. And she even believes that she found the holy robe, which was the, the robe that Christ wore on the way to the crucifixion that the Roman soldiers cast lots for. At the, at, the, at, the feet, at the feet of Christ or the crucifix. That holy robe is in the cathedral in Trier. So Marx grows up in a very, very religious city. His father, um, the family was Jewish, uh, uh, many rabbis in the family background, pretty faithful family. Uh, father converted to Lutheranism, probably at least in part under the social pressures of the day. Uh, it, uh, but the father always believed in God, Patrick, and he even said he would tell Carl, he'd say, you know, believing in God is a good thing for a young man, Carl, right? It gives you some accountability, something beyond yourself, a sense of ethics, right? Kind of a sense of absolute, something that you could follow. Carl was baptized around the age of five, 1823, 1824, became a fairly passionate Christian through his teen years and then fled the faith in college, where um, probably the biggest influence in college was a very anti-Semitic theology professor that he had named Bruno Bauer, who was such a bad theology professor that, that the, other, the other faculty members ran him out of the college. He was, he was teaching heresy. <laughs> and so, so Bruno Bauer and his favorite student, Karl Marx, together in 1841, started what they called an Archives of Atheism, a, a journal of atheism, which quickly folded because they couldn't get any support for it. But at that point, he was um, he pretty much put religion behind him in the 1840s and became a pretty uh, militant, aggressive atheist after that. Was there a following out between him and his dad and his parents or no? Oh, yeah. What was the oh, following yeah, out? I, what happened? I, I quote a chilling letter in, in uh, The Devil and Karl Marx. I think it was March 2nd, 1837, March 1837. And it's a letter between Marx and his father. And uh, the father is very harsh toward him in that letter. And I, I, I really think ex excessively harsh. But, but the, uh, Marx loved his father, admired his father. And after that, the father died not long after that. And Marx, from there on, looked to his parents, well, his mom, primarily for money. Marx was horrible about making money an absolute deadbeat dad who would not provide for his wife, would not provide for his children. Both his mother and his wife expressed the wish that Carl would start earning some capital instead of just writing about capital. He, he sent his wife out begging for money to his wife's in-laws. Uh, Carl went to his own in-laws. The, the only way that, that, that Marx was able to do what he did was because was of Friedrich Engels because Ingalls inherited a pile of money from his capitalist, wealthy, industrialist father. And, and Ingalls became Marx's sugar daddy, his subsidizer. And frankly, Ingalls was pretty sick of it too, the way that Carl all the time was, was pumping him for money constantly. Mar Marx refused to earn, uh, earn a living. The, the family, his wife, Jenny, um, Jenny's family was so upset at Carl's refusal to make any money that the family lent their nursemaid, a girl named uh, Helene DeMuth, who had grown up with Jenny. The family loaned her out to Carl and Jenny, and they, call, they called her Lenchen. Carl refused to pay her a penny, and, and, and in fact, Carl got her pregnant 
behind Jenny's back. And then Lenchen, Helene had a baby. Carl refused to admit that the child was his and of course refused to pay the child a penny, a penny of child support. So you know, the, the type of world that Marx was looking to create would have been a world where, where the government took care of somebody like Carl. Well, he sat around on his butt with carbuncles and boils and refusing to bathe and never earned a dollar. I mean, that's the type of world that, that he was looking to create for himself. What, what, what was his logic? Like, what was his motive and logic behind that way of thinking? In his own personal life? Yes, and the way he was like, I'm not, I'm refusing to help out my wife, you yeah. know, anybody. What was his logic to say, I'm not moving, people need to take care of me, not me taking care of them? Was it because he felt he was above people or because he felt people owed him something because of being mistreated? Of what, what was it? I don't think it was the latter. He did feel that people owed him something. He was he was very bitter and he was very angry and, and superior to others. Oh, yeah. I mean, Marx was it was hard for Marx ever to keep a friend. He eventually ran afoul of everybody. Um, I quote some of the vitriol between him and, and Mikhail Bakunin, who wrote um, God, uh, 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 God, the State and Revolution. No, I'm messing that up. But but who was a, another militant atheist and said, oh, here's Carl flinging his bile at me now, like he does at everybody. And uh, Ingalls was one of the only people who hung with him. And in fact, when, when Ingalls' mistress died, Ingalls, Ingalls did not believe in marriage, so he refused to marry any of the women that he lived with, but he loved this woman. And Carl wrote him a note where, um, and even the Marx biographers, the hagiographers, the people who like Marx say, oh, this was really offensive. This was a low blow by Marx. Marx in the first one or two, three lines acknowledges the death of Ingalls' um, girlfriend and then gets on to the next 20, 30 lines with a more important question of asking Ingalls for more money. And Ingalls was so offended by this. He wrote back this diatribe letter. Even my capitalist friends show more sympathy than you. And, and he almost cut Marx off permanently at that point. But he came to realize that Marx was, that's just how Marx was. You know, he he what, always what was, thought about himself. What was, what was Engels' reasoning for wanting to financially support Marx? What was, what's in it for him? Yeah, the cause, the cause of communism. And when Engels first met Marx, he, he, he referred to him in a poem as the monster of 10,000 devils. The monster of 10,000 devils. And he talks about this poem, this black man from Trier, right? He's using black here in the, in the sense of darkened, right? Like, like darkened figure, this foreboding presence. We had this strange allure to. And Engel's faith story is much more complicated. He had grown up uh, a Christian, never really wanted to leave the faith and always had this kind of, so he felt Carl like pulling him over to the dark side almost. But they formed this partnership the Communist Manifesto. I quote in the book, Marx, um, Engels writing to Marx, Carl, give a little more thought to the communist confession of faith. I think we should drop the catechetical form and just call it the manifesto. So they even talked about this document that they were writing in religious-like language. So this became something deeper for them. This was their calling right? This, this was their vocation. This was, this was like a, almost a religious enterprise to them. And they hung in there and became lifetime partners and wrote pretty much um, everything together. So if you like this little short clip from an interview I did, click over here to watch the entire interview. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.